Be my protector, O God, a mighty stronghold to save me, for you are my rock, my stronghold. Lead me, guide me, for the sake of your name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins now and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For, if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Thrown into Gehenna. 
And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into contempt. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage of is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman causes adultery. Again, you have heard it, heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord in all that you vow. And I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. How easy is it to truly love someone? Think of people that you like and people that you don't like. How easy is it to love someone and truly love them? What if I told you it was really easy? All you had to do is follow ten simple steps. I think those of us with a few years behind us would say, it's not that easy. Just think about those people that might annoy you someday. People that you just completely disagree with. It's not that easy to just love one another. Yesterday was St. Valentine's Day. Today it would be traditionally used for sharing love with other loved ones and our friends. It's nice to see little kids in elementary school sharing cards with each other. It kind of reminds us of the goodness and simpleness of love that we learn as kids that we seem to forget as we get older. But it's also kind of a sad state of affairs when we have to be reminded to love each other. The Lord asks us to love one another. A few years ago, uh, I was thinking about Valentine's Day yesterday, a few years ago, does anybody remember the the book that came out, Men Are From Mars, the Women Are From Venus? Does anybody remember reading it? Even if it's going up and down. So I remember a few years ago, my parents' neighbors, the uh, the husband bought his wife this book for Valentine's Day. (laughs) She got the first read through it and highlighted all the things he was doing wrong. (laughs) True story. I think she missed the point of the book. But it's not that easy. Loving one another is not as easy as reading a self-help book. It's not as easy as a checklist. It's not as easy as purely just following the Ten Commandments. That's what Jesus is telling us. So today's reading, we have this continuation of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. We heard the Beatitudes not too long ago. It's part of the same sermon. So what is Jesus doing? Think about the law of love that Jesus came to usher in. The first part of the law, what he talks about today in our reading today, and what he talked about in the previous readings, the law of Moses. Moses goes up on the mount, and he comes down with the rules that we were supposed to follow to be able to live with God. There were rules. Follow them, things go well. You don't follow them, things don't go well. And then he continues on, Jesus does, by saying, when he goes up to the mount, the Sermon on the Mount. He says, I have not come to replace what Moses told you. I've come to fulfill what Moses told you. You see, the Ten Commandments, it might be a little bit easier. If I asked you, how many people think you could get through the day without killing someone? I hope all of you think that's a fairly easy task. If not, you missed confession already. But on the other hand, which is easier? To say, thou shalt not kill someone. Or to say to love your brother, to love your enemy, which is easier? I think it's easier to follow the rules than it is to do what Jesus is asking us, which is to understand the spirit, the same spirit which wrote the law and inspired Moses to write those words down, is the same spirit that wrote the law of love on our hearts, the same spirit which inspired the gospel. The same spirit which we are supposed to live out every day. It's a law of love. And it's a lot harder than just following rules. 
So today's words, when we hear the, uh, the continuation after the Beatitudes, where Jesus says, I didn't come to remove the law, but to fulfill the law. Those words have a little stern, don't they? There's some things in there that might make you a little uncomfortable. We know that today, lust is a big problem in our society. What does Jesus say? Even if you just look lustfully at another, you've already committed adultery. That's pretty stern words for our society today. When we hear about all the ways in which we don't love each other, today's word should be a wake-up call. That God calls us to much more than just not hurting one another. Much more than just rules. Think about rules for a second. But what, do they, what do they do for us? Were the Ten Commandments of that? Absolutely not. I don't know about you, but in my house growing up, we had a lot of rules. Did anybody else have rules when we were little kids? And a lot of times I didn't like those rules. Especially as a teenager. They kind of got in my way. But now, as I'm an adult and I look back at those rules, I realize that those rules were not there just to inconvenience me, although they felt like it at the time. Those rules were there because my mom and dad loved me. And because they wanted me to learn how to love one another. So when I was a kid, for example, the chores were things like picking up the garbage and washing the dishes and cutting the lawn and those kinds of things. And I kind of say I didn't particularly appreciate doing those things. I feel like they didn't even supposed to. Not because I wanted to, but because I was supposed to. But now as, we, as I've grown older, when I was a kid, picking up the garbage was a chore. Now when I go and visit my parents, I'm willing to go because I want to take out the garbage for them. So they don't have to walk out there long enough to slip on the ice or any of those kinds of things. You see, as we mature in our faith, those rules are no longer rules for us. We see the spirit behind them. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell us as he unpacks the beatitudes. He's trying to tell us it's more than just following the rules, it's loving one another and seeing the spirit which guides us through those rules. This is my parents shaped me growing up in our rules. The Ten Commandments and the Law of Moses shaped us as a people. And now that I have to live beyond those rules and see the Spirit and how it extends to every person around me, not just my family, Jesus calls us into that kind of relationship now. To love one another. Truly love one another. Truly walk and live in the Spirit of what He showed us in His life. That's what the attitudes are about. That's what Jesus is trying to tell us in the Sermon on the Mount. So, it's not just about the outward appearance. It's an inward conversion of heart. Why you do nine things is just as important as what you do. Jesus is telling us, convert our hearts. Look for the right reason for the things that we do the way we treat people. Our second reading, St. Paul asked, how mature are you? That's the question Jesus is asking us through the words today. How mature are you in your faith life? Do you follow the rules of the church because you have to? Do you chafe against them like a teenager? Or do we look at the rules of the church, including the ones that might make us uncomfortable? For commonly today, the rules, as I say, fall over the waist and make a lot of people uncomfortable. But do we follow them because we have to? Or do we see the wisdom in the rules set up as love? So the Lord shows us the way in which we should live our lives. Rules are not always popular. But the church has, through Jesus Christ, has entrusted the church to give us these ways to live our lives. Just look for the love that's in front of us. So our relationship with each other is about love. Love is hard. It's work. Love is hard. It's work. Loving each other will truly make our hearts hurt sometimes, cause tears to flow. But it's worth it. Loving each other means we have to be vulnerable, risk being hurt, rejected. Love is worth it. Loving each other requires us to put aside our own desires to want the best for someone else. That sacrifice is worth it. Loving each other means that we will cast aside our resentment before we come to the Eucharist today, as we heard today in the gospel. Reconcile with one another before you come to the altar. As we leave here this week, let's commit truly loving each other. 
doing more than just following the rules, doing it for the right reasons, following the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. That's what God gives us. Please stand. We join Christians now, everywhere, Christians to all times, with the words of our faith. I believe in one God. God knows the desires of our hearts and hears our prayers. For all who shepherd the church, heeding God's will and seeking the power to carry it out, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all who strive to observe and teach the decrees of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all who strive to be faithful servants, sharing the good news of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who ardently search for wisdom and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our faith community, especially those unable to join us today at this table of grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Feed the departed into the light of your dwelling place, including Bernie Thompson, Dolly Krebs, Abby Franklin, Father John Rowley, and Sister Alice Kretzer, that they may gaze upon you for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions listed in our parish book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask you today, in particular, to pray for Adam Deacon and his family and any of those other people who are leaving our parish this week, that they know that they go forth with our prayers, our love, and our well wishes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you understand every need. Hear the prayers of your faithful gathered here today. We ask this through Christ 